our adventures through Tidewater, Virginia takes us to the Military Circle Mall, a mall that has fallen on hard times and awaits redevelopment. Let's brace ourselves, keep a sharp eye, and do a couple quick laps here at the Military Circle Mall. Military Circle Mall would start out life in 1969 as developers Harvey Lindsay and Morris Alpert went forward to build a new shopping mall. Construction of J.C. Penney would begin, followed quickly by the mall itself, both of which would open in 1970. Original anchors included J.B. Hunter, J.C. Penney, and Smith & Welton. Shortly after, a Sheraton hotel would open up attached to the mall, and in 1974, Leggett would come into the mall, accompanied with minor improvements to the mall. It would become the second largest enclosed mall in the region and would kick up competition against the Pembroke Mall to the east. The two malls managed to have a different lineup of anchor stores, which would allow them to coexist for a time. Nineteen seventy six would see the departure of JB Hunter, but this was addressed with the replacement of Talheimers. The mall would see two cinemas also come in at around the time. While this was a curious development, the mall itself would live on for quite a while, changing hands to the Rouse Company in nineteen eighty six. However, problems began to arise in the nineties, starting with Smith and Welton, which would close shop in nineteen ninety. Meanwhile, Hex would come to acquire and Vor Thalheimers, rebranding all Thalheimer stores as Hecht stores. In the mid-90s, Rouse would appoint urban retail properties for management and would commit to a new renovation to revitalize the mall's image. Renovations were completed in 1996, bringing the mall up to the look that it boasts today. Leggett would be rebranded to Belk in 1997, but Belk seemed to be allergic to the Tidewater Virginia market and would quickly close up in 1998. With empty anchors being a bad idea, the Smith & Welton space would be demolished as well as the former Leggett space. Sears would fill in the void left behind by Smith & Welton, while Cinemark would establish itself on the former Leggett space with 16 screens. The next challenge came in 1999 as the MacArthur Center opened up in downtown Norfolk. MacArthur Center was geared more towards an upscale demographic, while Military Circle remained as a solid middle-class mall. So, there was room for the two to coexist, to an extent. Two thousand and two would see another ownership change as Thor Equities acquired the mall via a $60 million loan. They also gained ownership of the Sheraton Hotel, which was now a Doubletree Hotel. In 2004, Thor would rebrand the mall as the Gallery at Military Circle. 2005, Hecht's would be overshadowed by an even bigger predator, Federated Department Stores, which shortly after acquiring Hecht's would convert all nameplates under them into Macy's. 2006 would see the Doubletree Hotel sold off, and shortly after, the hotel would close just a couple years later. There was some hubbub and business politicking happening on the sidelines in an effort to reopen the hotel, but ultimately, after missed payments and neglect, the hotel would be marked condemned. The mall was beginning to slip, and in 2012, Sears would be the first anchor to close down. No surprise there, really. With Sears Holdings beginning their path to destruction, it was inevitable. Meanwhile, JCPenney would be the next anchor to close in 2014, 
being acquired shortly after by Norfolk Economic Development Authority. The mall itself would be placed in a receivership in 2014 as its appraisals dropped. Torchlight investors stepping in to handle financing. Just a year later, in 2015, the mall was foreclosed on and the Woodmont Company would be called in to manage the mall. Following this, the gallery at Military Circle would be renamed back into the Military Circle Mall. Two thousand and seventeen would see some good news as tenancy continued to slip. The old JC Penny space was refurbished to make way for a mortgage company called Movement Mortgage. This space would bring in new jobs and fill in vacant space that overall detracted from the mall's appeal. However, this wouldn't be enough to offset dwindling occupancy, a closing Macy's, and a perception of rampant crime taking over the mall. To sum up events that have happened at the Military Circle Mall in terms of crime, shoplifting is very common, and that can easily be overlooked and dealt with at any mall. However, this mall is rife with more concerning reports. A man was shot amid a fight in 2014 near the old closing J.C. Penney. Despite the incident, mass panic was down, and apparently shopping just continued on that day. The man was treated for his injuries and subsequently released from hospital. In addition, fights between teenagers would break out in the food court, leading to a pretty nasty hit piece by WTKR, which would paint all teenagers as delinquents out to cause nothing but trouble. Dan Bell's take on this mall included a violent fight that broke out in the mall. I also remember a story about management taking legal action over a picture of blood in the mall that dominated Google Images. All of this combined is likely a contributing factor in the mall's decline, as it became known as a pretty dangerous place to be. Today. The Military Circle Mall is still going, with a handful of national chains mingled among a roster of mom and pop stores. The security presence is heavy, likely to keep further incidents from breaking out, which is understandable, despite the flack me and others give security guards. Cinemark remains as the main attraction, while Ross Dress for Less offers itself as a junior anchor. For now. The former JCPenney remains filled with the mortgage offices as well as some of its space going to Optima Health. As for the mall's future, it's difficult to say what will come of it. Redevelopment plans have been touted for the mall, all of which appear to be slow-going, long-term plans to overhaul the property into mixed use. Whatever the case may be, I do wish the current owners the best going forward. Despite everything, the mall is still going with businesses finding a home within the mall. Provided maintenance gets kept up, I could see this mall making a comeback, perhaps as something new, something different. I would love to go into detail about what I think about this mall, but once again, we're kind of out of time and we're starting to wind down. In short, I enjoyed visiting this mall and going for a walk, but I was pressed for time and had to keep a schedule up so I couldn't make much time to shop. Our next stop in Tidewater, Virginia will take us from this beautiful mall blessed by Rouse to a mall that's been bastardized and, dare I say, destroyed. So stick around as I provide more roast on that one. In the meantime, don't forget to like or dislike, subscribe, share, comment, all that jazz, and feel free to pay a visit on Minds.com or Kofi.com if you want. I also have a BitChute account which I need to get up off the ground, so do subscribe there if YouTube suddenly has a problem with this kind of thing.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Military Circle Mall farewell and good luck.